I personally feel that the scholars of today's time, especially on the campus in the University of Kashmir, are very curious and meticulously looking after the things like open access and pu uh, publishing their articles. They are almost desperate to see that their publications should come in the reputed journals. And in the journals where we have today's in, in the present uh, world order, we see now it has commercialized everything. We pay money and get our articles published in any journal which doesn't have any significance or credibility. For which the seminar is in continuation to our old exercises uh, that seminars we have conducted. How we can better guide to our scholars to publish quality art articles in the reputed journals which can be in care list of UGC so that they get encouragement in the job as well. So I think we have second session which is equally very important for our scholars which is sir, for uh, a training program for those who are from electronics department, computer sciences who will join us later. So I think it will be useful for our students especially for those who are doing research or who are in the threshold of their career to make it in the academic pursuits. I think uh, this seminar in ultimate terms would be beneficial for our student scholars. I think more participation should come from our students who are curious to understand what are the delicacies in publishing articles and difficulties that we face. I think more will be elaborated and we are eager to listen Professor Vijay Ahmed Alvi as our esteemed uh, keynote address speaker today's morning uh, and then Professor Irshad Amanauchu Saab who is equally well versed in these aspects. I welcome you sir again in this today's seminar and thank all my uh, participants here, my librarians, my staff, my employees who always are on tender hookers to see that everything goes in a right direction. Thank you very much for that. I really would like to go to the genesis of these two, three terms so that all of you are able to understand the why and the how of all these terms, why these have come into existence. Dear friends, there are social science people also, many of the social science and a gentleman from social science is heading the library these days. We all humans are social. We are social beings. From cradle to the grave, we depend upon others. We share our joys and we share our sorrows. Again, another feature of we human beings is that we are Ashraful Makhlukat. We have been bestowed with a brain to be able to discriminate, explore all things. We don't accept anything on the face of it. We are curious. We question. We wonder. Then we go adventuring into the unknown. This is a trait of the human beings. There are so many other creatures, other creations on the earth, but you alone have this. So, dear friends, when the, in the human civilization, we had in the beginning, somebody would discover something, somebody would know something, he would share it with others locally, orally. But as the civilization advanced, we had a systematic way of exploring. We gave it the name of research. We gave it the name of research. We conduct research in a systematic, organized way following a methodology, scientific methodologies as we call them now, we were talking about. In the beginning, in most of the fields, we used to follow a speculative method, 
speculations, guesswork. But then we found that this will not do. 2 plus 2 is always 4. It can never be 2 point, 3 point something or 4 point something. The same methodology we started developing the difference. Now, once we realized it, we found that research work we do is communicated to others, to the people who are locally located, who are not far away from you, talk to them orally. But as the populations became wide separate, countries came into existence and all these things came into being. The problem was how to reach those people. Tell them what we have discovered, what we have invented, where we have succeeded, where we have failed. You wanted to communicate to others, number one. Number two, we had another problem. How to preserve all this intellectual, this property for the generations to come, that is the posterity. So we had two problems. How to communicate with those who are located distantly and then how to preserve it for posterity. This was the problem with us. Thus came into existence a mechanism of recording. I didn't use the word writing because writing came later. We used to inscribe on clay tablets, parchments, many other things in the beginning. Then finally, dear friends, came the alphabet and all that. And <clears throat> there came the paper, the writing material, and Gutenberg Revolution, as you call it, 1400, uh, 15th century, middle of the 15th century, we had the book, printed book, printed with movable printing so that you can have cheap and books printed speedily. But as the research became very active in the world, it was realized that book is not able to communicate the latest micro-thought, the nascent micro-thought to the scientists. It is time writing a book, then printing it, binding it, then marketing it, is time consuming. So, dear friends, we had, we found a problem. And it is around six, to be exact, on the 5th, 5th of March, 1665, we had the first journal in the world. So book, and now the journal. Journal became a very quick vehicle for the transportation of knowledge around the world. So we had journals, dear friends. So we thought the problem is over. But by the second half of the 20th century, the flip to the research is unparalleled. Too much of research going on around the world on all facets of life not only the science and technology, but social sciences, humanities and all that. So we found there for instance, a flip to research. So once the flip to research came there, immediate byproduct was the more and more information, how to accommodate it. So the number of journals began increasing. But this gave us a problem. Until that time, we had journals published by scholarly literary societies. Now came the commercialization of journals. A journal, for example, I will tell you the chemical abstracts in 1940 cost you $72. Just $72. And today you find the prices. No? Exorbitant, skyrocketing of these prices. So, dear friends, we again came across the problems. Too much, too many journals in the world, 
then twigging of journals because specializations came into existence even in botany we had to separate the journal a journal of botany had to be separate twigged into smaller journals to accommodate more and more specializations difference so thus came different journals this uh, the, the, we had two problems commercial too many journals commercialization which resulted in skyrocketing of these prices of journals so this was the pro this was the situation that friends until recently when people realized that scientific is research scientific research is conducted is financed by public funds you tax payer public pays for this to the government and government gives it to the universities and other research organizations people say when our we when you produce something with our money why should we then pay for having access to it that is the problem you are paying a tax the professor conducts the research then this research is conducted in a journal and then you have to pay for this journal why because you, you it is your money on the basis of which you conducted research so people started crashing why this so people had a problem once we realized that people have paid for this research the end product of which is an article published in the journal why not to make it freely available to the people thus came dear friends the concept of open access this is how the concept of open access came into existence once we it became wide spread the idea the movement became wide spread people started bringing about these open access journals in the beginning we used to say that it doesn't have the quality but later there came out open access journals which are really of good quality peer reviewed journals and all that so we have open access journals we have open access books we have open access many databases around the world so the concept of open access dear friends then as the wide spread this research became wide spread some mischief also began creeping in i conduct a piece of research and i claim that i have used this methodology this apparatus i have put on the uh, huge library building stock to ga gather this data and all that so we started dear friends this uh, research it was not that way transparent it had certain problems so people started saying if the gentleman conducts a piece of research his everything the methodology he used the data he collected and finally the res result all should be available openly so that it is transparent it is there is some quality control on research dear friends came into existence the concept of open science what is open science just as in the case of open journals open this access <coughs> you call that all information sources whatever the format whether digital or print macro or macro nascent or past whatever it is it should be available so in the case of science dear friends all the pro is this methodology the data collected that are uh, this uh, analyzed the methodology that you follow to analyze it and the end product and the, even the laboratory note books that you followed in conducting this research those should be openly available this is a very good step towards the quality control because anything which becomes widespread 
Some mischief always comes into existence, dear friends. But this is the quality control, open access. Right? The third one you talk about is IEEE Explorer. There are databases nowadays in the world. Because we belong to an information society in which we can't do without information. At each and every step, dear friends, you need information, you need data. You need data, data you transform into information and information then comes the knowledge and all that. So what is the problem is, dear friends, we now have today, with the help of this information communication technology, we have many databases available in the world confined, limited to different subjects or subject fields. IEEE Explore is a database that takes care of computer science, electronics, and electrical engineering. It has collected data right from 1884 and makes it available worldwide but not free. It is not open access. It is not open access yet. Steps are being taken to make it open access. Recently I had a communication that they are <clears throat> doing it. But you have to pay for this access. Either institutional subscription or individual subscription or you can buy it online, whatever you want to. So this there are so many other databases in your subjects. We have um, this uh, explore uh, physics, chemistry, botany, zoology, and all that. We have all these available, dear friends. Right? I have been uh, trying to uh, educate scholars and students, especially uh, scholars who have freshly joined, as to what can be the role of assessing data, compiling data, and making that data in terms of market value useful to all. When we were students and scholars, all of us had to individually visit initially departmental library, then the central library, and manually assess the data available. That's in the form of books, journals, etc. Now the scenario is altogether different. You approach libraries, and maybe sometimes try to look at books available in that, but majority of the scholars and students try to use network facilities to assess what is the available data. And for that, they try to see what is the most accessible journal or other data available. And after assessing the overall profile of that, tend to communicate their work for publication without bothering about the quality, without bothering about the accessibility, without bothering about the impact of publishing journals, publishing articles in those journals. See, when we look at the assessment of the profile of a person who is applying for any position, be it a position in a project, be it position in a college or in the university, as a faculty member or as a researcher, at the time of assessing the profile, we are always having a look at what is the impact of his work, what is the impact of his publications or her publications, as well as what sort of communication talent he or she has. You can do work for years together, but when you try to publish your findings without bothering or without assessing the quality of the journal, quality of the publication, you may not have that much impact as one expects to get. Reasons are because when we assess the overall profile of any faculty member or any scholar, as I disclosed last time also, I am chairperson of a committee who assess the profile of teachers for their promotion under career advancement scheme. In that assessment, we look at all the work that they have done, all the publications they have actually been able to publish in the form of their own uh, achievements, and then what the quality of the publication and quality of the journals or the books they have published. And whether those are easily accessible journals or whether those journals have an impact or whether those books have been assessed prior to publication by those who have knowledge about that. See, as was rightly pointed out by Alvi Saab, that there was a time that 
one had to wait and search for a journal and a publisher to send a paper for publication. That was a limited number. And I tell you frankly, when I completed my PhD, I only had four publications after completing PhD because we were looking for journals which is relevant or related to my field of work. And we had to search for that and submit the papers. And usually it took almost months, sometimes more than a year to receive the acceptance letter from that journal. And only positive factor was that at that time, the availability of journals, even though limited, was interrelated to the quality of the journals. Those four publications had much better value as compared to even 20 publications that we may have at present. Because they were assessing exactly what the quality of the work is and what the genuineness of the work is. And usually, they would sometimes send, us, send it back to us twice, thrice for editing and for reformulating that publication so that whosoever reads that, be it a scholar or a teacher, can in turn have a positive impact or can have a positive assessment of that. You look at books, look at journals, compare the books published in say 1800 or 1900 and compare those books with the books available at present. Some are comparable, some are comparable, but majority are not comparable. Because the quality of the books that we even assess, I will just give one example. A person, a two persons, Bentham and Hooker, Assess the flora of whole India. Jitte plants India method SSK, it took them almost 27 years to compile the data and they publish what we refer to as FBI, Flora of British India, in seven volumes. And in that era, they actually compiled data of almost 15,000 species, sorry, 7,000 species at that time. Now, despite a time lapse of more than 100 years, more than 100 years, it has not been published as such. We now publish books in the form of one family. Suppose Estraceae, Papillonaceae, or Poaceae, and so on. So that we are absolutely sure that all the plants of that family have been collected, identified, and published. It took them a huge span of time, but at present it is taking a much uh, major uh, time span. Reason being that we want to be absolutely sure as to whatever I want to publish, nobody is able to raise a finger that data is not at par with what the available sources are. And such assessments in turn reveal that the books that will be published soon or published sequentially will give us much more idea about as to what is available and what is not available. And that will also give us idea about what was published by Bentham and Hooker way back almost more than 120 years ago. What is the difference in the number of plants that you have described in relation to what we describe? Our number may be high. We may describe around more than 12, 15, 000, 12 to 15,000 species, but that number will also show that we have lost something. What they documented in the form of different plants, different species, we may not be able to find those at present. Now, now imagine what is the impact of that comparison of the publications. What Bentham and Hooker saw way back is in turn revealing that because of the changes in environmental conditions, etc., we have seen some of them getting extinct. That library gives me two things. One, what was existing, and second, what is existing, and what has happened in between will also educate me as to what should be my theme. Now, such assessments, such quality publications will in turn give us many different themes of trying to highlight that I am not theoretically claiming that this is my work or this is what I have done as was rightly pointed out by Alvisa but we can actually be able to practically defend our statements and for that I have just tried to highlight two things or two or three things one is when we look at writing concept in that writing concept everybody would want to write it be a paper, manuscript for a particular journal as per the uh, documented themes or a book or a booklet or a monograph about a topic. But a writing in turn is not as easy as the comment is. It takes one second to write writing. But so once we look at writing, when we were scholars or students, our teachers used to force us to write the same text ten times and would edit it every time that this is a mistake, this is the sequence that you have to modify. And that writing ultimately got published in quality journals. Why? 
because we try to understand what the theme of my teacher is, what the theme of the journal is, what the theme of that, that book is, where I want to publish a chapter. And it took me sometimes more than six, seven months to write and get that accepted in that particular journal publication. That means writing should also be first cross-checked in terms of what the theme is. Then, when we look about the subject, as was rightly pointed out in the beginning, subject-wise, initially, the number of journals was limited. Nowadays, all of you may be receiving calls regularly or emails regularly that you submit an article, within a span of one week, it will be published. That's happening. But at that time, you should know exactly what subject I am part of. And, as I told you in the beginning, I am assessing the profile of different faculty members for promotion to different scales. And we saw, in certain cases, the number of publications more than 70, more than 50, more than 100 in certain cases. But once we assessed the quality of those, we found that there were ordinary journals available streetwise. Gali gali mein ho bante hai, bikte. And that is where you should be concerned about the subject and the theme of that subject that you want to publish so that those readers would appreciate that the writings are correct and writings are original, there is no manipulation. Nowadays we even check cross a thesis at the time of submission whether there is any manipulation or we use the term cut paste. We see a paper published by somebody, what methodology as follows, copy that, paste it on our paper and publish that as said. But now the theme has come that every line of an article is read ten times to see whether it is original or it has been manipulated. Of course, methodology can be same. Standard methods in different subjects can vary, but in a particular subject method can be same. We have to quote the reference, what we have used, what method we have used, but we cannot manipulate writings by copying somebody's work and pasting it on our paper. That is where we should be absolutely sure about the text in terms of themes and subjects. Then, one more thing. Journals. Imagine, as was rightly pointed out, that if I want to publish, I work on only medicine for the last 30 years. I have to search for a journal in which they will highlight what the herbal medicine's role is and what my work is, whether it is relevant to that journal or not. I cannot send my herbal medicine paper to taxonomy journal because taxonomy is simply nomenclature for us. My work is on medicine as such. And that cannot be directly related to pharmacology journal because pharmacology concept of medicine is different as compared to my concept of medicine. 30 year work on medicinal plants is simply related to how habitat variability has an impact on quality of medicine. How I can commercially domesticate and cultivate it. And there I have to be absolutely sure when I submit that article for publication, that journal, that book in which I publish a chapter as such, can actually have an accessibility to all the scholars, students who want to know exactly what is being done and what they want to do. And this in turn will also reveal that we are not only concerned about ourselves in terms of increasing number of publications, we are concerned about those who read our publications so that our publication will in turn contribute to their profile also. Once they cross quote our reference, it will add to my profile of course. We use the term citation. Kitty citation many articles ki hai. That will add to my profile, but I should be able to actually facilitate upliftment of those who read my article. Because they may modify their own plan of work and they will in turn try to publish articles which can be having much better quality as compared to ordinary journals. And there, obviously, such workshops, such guidelines, as was rightly spoken by Alvi Saab, it has initiated way back. But unfortunately, it was not highlighted as it should have been highlighted about 20, 30 years ago. Now, I last uh, two weeks back was uh, in Central University uh, talking about the similar theme. When I teach in botany department, I in the fourth semester try to actually guide my students to write an article for any journal on the basis of the specialized or interest they have and submit a copy to me for assessment. And if they uh, submit a quality article, we in turn submit to any journal and give them as a sort of a first publication in their name, even though they are still in the master's work. But there they only try to learn exactly what is the way of publishing an article based on their work that they have done during the master's. Because in 
our uh, subject, we have a project work for third and fourth semester, and they want to publish that work in the form of an article, and we facilitate the publication also. That's one. Second, I want to also have a theme where we educate scholars, because scholars should be seriously guided by the supervisors as to how they can draft a paper, draft an article, or how they can assess the quality and impact of the journal in which they want to submit that. And whatever guidelines are communicated to them by the committee of specialists or subject experts, they should take it positively. Sometimes paper may be edited three times, four times, five times, seven times, ten times. Don't worry about the number of editings. Because at the end, quality of that article will uplift you as well as the lab of which you are a group. Otherwise, if you refuse to edit it as per the recommendation of the assessor, quality will not remain as good as you presume it is. Therefore, I would also like that the scholar should learn on the basis of advice quoted to them by the editors of the journal or the subject specialists about that. Then finally, therefore, teachers should also be absolutely sure about what they want to publish, how they want to publish, what is the journal's overall profile, what is the quality and sequence of publications in that journal, and only try to highlight their main achievements in the form of that, their own findings. Not propose or publish any theoretical concepts. Because sometimes after publication you receive comment from assessors that who has published their article and why. There is no new finding in this. This is a sort of uh, repetition of some work that has been done by somebody else also. You should be absolutely sure that is teacher himself or herself should also assess as to what I want to publish. And what sort of effort I have to put in to have a quality in that article which I am going to publish so that tomorrow when I apply anywhere or try to highlight my profile on the university portal, on the departmental portal, once it is read by somebody, he will in turn get directly in contact with you. You have published this article. Please, I want to have a copy of this.